have seen this video online, it is everywhere. Recently, the Oxford Union, the debating society in Oxford, England, held a debate on wokeness. And from out of nowhere, a podcast host and comedian called Constantine Kissin defied the odds and won over the audience on a college campus with force and brilliance. And if you're wondering how he did it, here's how. This country is responsible for 2% of global carbon emissions, which means that if Britain was to sink into the sea right now, it would make absolutely no difference to the issue of climate change. You know why? Because the future of the climate is going to be decided in Asia and in Latin America by poor people who couldn't give a about saving the planet. 120 million people in China do not have enough food. I don't mean that they don't get dessert. I mean they suffer from malnutrition. That means that their immune system is breaking down because they don't have enough food. You're not going to get them to stay poor. And the only thing that wokeness has to offer in exchange is to brainwash bright young minds like you to believe that you are victims to believe that you have no agency, to believe that what you must do to improve the world is to complain, is to protest, is to throw soup on paintings. We know that the way to improve the world is to work, is to create, it is to build. And the problem with woke culture is that it's trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Now, you'll notice if you watch that video that he's not reading that. There's no teleprompter. He's ad-libbing that whole thing that is right off the top of his head. That's not easy. Constantine Kissin is the co-host of the Trigonometry podcast. He joins us tonight. Sure appreciate your coming on. I think the video of your remarks at the Oxford Union has been shared more than you know, anything on social media in the U.S. in a, in a long time. How, how was the response to what you said? It was great. Uh, I think people really enjoyed it. And I think it's partly because people are fed up of wokeness, as of course you know. But I think also there's another thing going on, Tucker. We live in a society in which adults are afraid of children and young yes. people in particular. And so when you see somebody who is an adult talking to young people and being straight with them and saying, look, if you care about certain issues in the world, if you care about climate change or racial injustice or whatever, whining and complaining is not going to fix that problem. That We need young people to step up and actually work and build and create things. And as I said in the speech, to, to create the technology and the science that is going to help solve all the problems of the future. So I think that's one of the reasons it's gone uh, so viral. And the feedback has been incredible. I really haven't received any negative feedback at all. It's been very, very positive. So I'm very grateful for that. Well, we're grateful to see it because, I mean, first of all, you made a rational fact-based case, which is always assuring to see. It's wonderful to see someone making an argument, and you did. But it's the first time in a long time I've ever, I've seen somebody directly challenge the prevailing view on campus and not get shouted down. How did that happen? Well, as you say, I think I made a rational argument. And I think this is the thing that I've been thinking about a lot. You know, uh, we spoke a few years ago, and as a comedian, I was concerned about the erosion of free speech and the censorship, yes. particularly in this country, in the UK. But as we've interviewed people in trigonometry, as we've spoken to some of the greatest minds, you know, the Jordan Petersons of the world and many others, what I've started to realize is that this ideology, wokeness, is fundamentally anti-human. And the narrative goes something like this. You know, we are evil, particularly Westerners, especially you know, straight white men like you, but actually all of us are evil and we must be punished. And that's why some of the solutions that we're being offered to the issue of climate change don't seem to make much sense. I don't really see how making pensioners in Britain freeze to death over the winter is going to solve the problem of climate change or indeed impoverishing people in India and China. And I think actually we've got to believe that young people are persuadable. We've got to make rational arguments to them. Uh, and that is, I think, the way uh, to, to deal with many of these problems. We've got to challenge young people to step up and be better. We have to believe that young people are persuadable. And I think a lot of us in the elderly community or near elderly are, are losing confidence in that. Um, but you believe it to be true, having just had this experience. I do. And I think we all have to embrace that approach. I think we're not going to get anywhere by chastising people. We have to try right. and persuade them. I think that you've, we've got to remember, Tucker, they're young minds. We were all young once and we were just as idiotic and stubborn uh, and so sure of ourselves that we thought we knew everything. Uh, I think we've got to fight. Uh, we've got to fight to change people's minds. And the way to do that is with rational argument and encouraging critical thinking, which is what I hope my speech has done.
Yes, I remember as a young man, I was very impressed by and persuaded by people who had forceful ideas they could clearly and rationally express. And um, I'm glad to see there's still people like that because you, you did that. Constantine Kissin, thank you so much. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.